Do you want to make your own podcast? Spotify has a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and this is the platform that I use because it makes it so simple to record and distribute your podcast all in one place using your cell phone. What you need to do is download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started. Hello, my name is Katherine Moore, social worker, mom, coffee lover, and founder of Social Workers Rise, where we inspire social workers to connect, expand their knowledge, and change more lives than they ever thought possible. I'm so excited you found my podcast. We will talk everything social work on every level from micro to macro. We will hear the stories of social workers who are doing big things, learn new skills, and most importantly, give you actionable steps to make a difference today. Let's go. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Social Workers Rise. So it is March 10, 2020, and the world is just losing its mind. Like the the whole coronavirus is causing worldwide panic and fear among so many people. Like the stock market is losing its mind events, big events like concerts, they're being canceled. Italy is, the entire country is being quarantined. So it's just crazy, y'all. It's like, like people are losing their minds. But as social workers, we're not losing our minds, or hopefully you're not. (laughs) And I thought a lot about, you know, when, when's the right time to, to talk about coronavirus? When, Am I going to have enough information? You know, what is it that social workers need to know? You know, I want to make sure that the information that I give you is going to be of value and of service for you. So I decided that there is no right time to record this episode, that this situation is continually changing, it's evolving, it's very fluid. And that is part of the fear factor of why it's so scary. So I want to prelude with this. I am not really scared. However, I am concerned about what it's going to do. You know, I don't want anybody to die. You know, anyone who is sick, I don't want that. I don't want anyone to become sick. I don't want anyone to die. With that said, I do feel like... They may be blowing this out of proportion. Um, But again, we don't really know. That's just purely my opinion. And also another prelude to this is I am not a doctor. I am a social worker. And my opinions do not correlate with any of my other relationships, my work, my job, whatever. So with that said, I just wanted to hop on here and give you some some talks and tips to alleviate the fear and just how we as social workers can be of service to not only our clients but take care of ourselves because you guys are my main people that I'm concerned about. I want all my social workers to be okay, to feel confident, to feel empowered. And we do that through information. And honestly, sometimes I have to do it like a little bit fake it till you make it. I can, I will come across as, oh yeah, you know, it's going to be fine. I'm going to find you answers. Like we're going to do this together. Um, And inside I'm like, oh shit, what do I do? But we all know we've been through, we all have been through really tough situations and this is no different. We will also get through this together. Okay. You all are not alone in this. So, you know, first, I 
you may or may not know, I work in the healthcare industry. So coronavirus, uh, I'm like up to my eyeballs in information about coronavirus, which is very helpful. Um, It helps me to be able to educate other people and to make sure that I myself are taking the necessary precautions and are protected so I don't unknowingly carry it home to my family or unknowingly spread it to patients. And that is my goal. So, you know, nothing, I'm not going to say anything new or groundbreaking here because we know that we need to be practicing basic hygiene. What I do want to talk about is just kind of take a step back. And I am completely fascinated with what this is doing as far as like socially. And there's three ways that I feel the this current coronavirus is really expanding our knowledge, it's strengthening our industry, and it's bringing just increased awareness about how close-knit we all are together. And I'm just completely fascinated looking at this from a macro perspective and almost like a strengths-based perspective because we can turn every single mess into a message and we can use every single bad thing that's happened to us and turn it into a strength. You know, what can we learn from this? How is this forcing us to grow? And we don't grow in our comfort zone. Y'all know that. I hope you do. (laughs) We grow when shit hits the fan and we're like, oh no, what do I do? I'm going to have to be creative and figure out some way You know, I don't have the resources right now, so how can I be resourceful, okay? So, there's a lot of fear going on, and that is, you know, that's to be expected. Um, This is all new, so we don't really know, There's and people are scared of the unknown, okay? So it's helpful to kind of take a step back and look at the big picture because it really helps us to see like, okay, my fear is not, like I'm not crazy. It's not unfounded to be scared of something I don't know. This is happening to everybody and a lot of people are scared. Um, but it also helps us to, by stepping back, it helps us to see like the big picture, what can we expect and how can we prepare? So for example, Italy is quarantined. We can look at them and just see, okay, what is going on over there? If that happened here in America, what are we going to do? How can we prepare now? How can we use the knowledge that we have now to make steps to make sure that we are prepared? And this in turn will reduce our fear. So not just for our clients, but also for us. So it's good to be informed. I'm not going to just spew and regurgitate a bunch of facts to you because I could. I have been like vigorously researching this (laughs) for a long time. And I'm practicing self-care, just saying, okay, this, all of this information and all of this fear, all of these news stories are really stressing me out. So I'm going to take a step back and not turn on the news. I haven't watched the news in like a long time. Um, not Try not to read any articles that look like they're going to be inducing fear. I'm just more about the facts, like what is going on and kind of keeping my, my keeping tabs on, on what's going on and the latest developments. So, you know, one thing about, there's actually three things that I find that are pretty fascinating about the coronavirus and the current culture of fear that we are experiencing is one, it really helps us expand our clinical skills and grow the skills that we need to be effective and to help people through fearful times and traumatic events because we're experiencing this twofold. One, we're concerned about our clients. We might have 
clients, I know I do, we might have clients who are at high risk and could actually die from this. And that's very scary. Uh, We want to do what we can to make sure they're educated about the things that they need to know and how to protect themselves. At the same time, we don't want to be a carrier and we may be concerned about our own family members. And we may know people who are at high risk for, for harm from coronavirus, which is really, really scary. And if you don't know, you know, they're saying right now, the people at highest risk are people who have diseases or illnesses that cause them to be immunocompromised. So things like breathing conditions, COPD, asthma, um, people who are going through cancer treatments, their immune system is reduced, people who are already sick and in a fragile state of health, that this could you know, be the thing to push them over the edge. So that is, you know, something very important to be aware of. And it's so it it forces us to have to set our boundaries to compartmentalize. Okay, I'm scared for myself. What can I do to protect me and my family? And I'm also scared for my family. So, you know, just being extra aware and using supervision and our peers to reflect if we're having any counter transference, if we're having any any feelings about about the fear that's going on you know are we maintaining professional boundaries are we doing everything that we can to to be a support for each other you know client or social worker or family you know no matter what our role is we have to come together and work together so that we're all at our best and the other thing too is it really takes courage to show up in the face of potential harm, which is exactly what each and every one of us are doing. It takes courage for you to make home visits. It takes courage to go to to work if you're working with these populations. It takes courage to, maybe you're going to a big group you know, you know that there's a risk of something happening or maybe contracting it. However, you're choosing to still show up and you're still taking those precautions. I hope that you, if you are showing up, that you are, you know, frequently washing your hands, don't touch your eyeballs or your face, all the, all the hygiene things that we know that we should do. But it takes courage to show up in these times of uncertainty and we don't know what's going on. So I really applaud you for that and keep it up, okay? Uh, you can also have the courage to speak to your, your boss or your management or director, whoever it is, to see are there other arrangements that you could do in case maybe your child has to stay home. Maybe you come down with a fever. Like, what are you going to do? Do they want you to work from home? Can you work remotely? Can you attend more meetings on, you know, on Zoom or whatever it is that you use to communicate? I know that some people are increasing their use of teletherapy where people are not coming into the office or they're not going to the home, but instead, let's talk over the phone and make this work. The other thing to be aware of and that's going to be a strength that social workers tend to be really good at is having a positive mindset like okay you're scared let's talk about this let's run through the worst case scenario and then let's brainstorm how can we be resourceful and prepare so we need to be focused on you know what are the strengths what do we have in our lives right now that is going good, that we can tap into, that we can access our resources. So, you know, that's how this is growing our clinical skills is it's really making us expand and it's, you know, really expanding our, our threshold of control too. Like we, 
don't have control over this. No one does. And we just have to be okay with that and take take action over the things that we do have control over. Secondly, how I'm kind of fascinated about this whole thing on a macro level is it's really, <clears throat> excuse me, it's actually a visualization for how we are all connected. So this started in China, which is, you know, very far from where I am here in California, but it has spread so fast, which for me, it's just a reminder of how truly connected all of us really are. And that if there's something going on across the world, it has the potential to impact the entire world. It can impact the economy. It can send us into you know, fear. It can have a major, major impact on how we relate to other people, the way that we live our lives. I mean, it's just amazing to see how fast these things spread, you know, for better or for worse. It's like the butterfly effect. There was that um, that movie in the 90s. Gosh, I don't even remember. I, I need to re- re- rewatch that. But I just it was something about how to the effect of like something happens in this one part and then it triggers another event and that event triggers more events and it is just the butterfly effect where the saying like if a butterfly flaps its wings, it can cause you know, a lot of wind further down. You just never really know. And you really, you really never know the impact that we have on people's lives. Um, I feel like the, this, the work that we do as social workers also has a butterfly effect because if we can change the mood of one parent, of one patient, of one child, how is their mood improving? How is that impacting the rest of their relationships and in turn those relationships and those interactions and their actions. And lastly, this is fascinating because the coronavirus is really increasing the empathy of society. Whether they know it or want to acknowledge it or not, it is because here in America, we are so focused on our day-to-day, like, oh, no, I'm not going to worry about China, like, whatever, that's their deal, but, or the refugees, that's always been a hot topic, it really increases our empathy, like, oh, shoot, now I have to consider what am I going to do for my family in case this happens, in case there is disease and I cannot leave my home, how am I going to respond And it really increases our level of empathy for other people that, you know, I've even seen where, you know, people are kind of tying it together with the vaccine conversation. So children who are unable to be vaccinated, their parents kind of live in this constant state of fear that their child could die because there is no vaccine. And that it really just shows us, you know, another level and another insight into how other people live and, um, and how they're coping. So I want to leave you with just some final thoughts and to refocus your energy on what can we actually control in this world where there's so many unknowns and so many uncontrollables. One, focus on our strengths. So our strengths-based perspective is going to be really, really strong. What resources do we already have in place that can help us? How can we be prepared? Okay. Two, inform yourselves. Read the research that's out there. I'll, in the show in the show notes, I'll post some really good information on from not only NASW, which I was I was really happy to see that they have some tips specifically for social workers, but also some tips from the CDC on mental health and coping during coronavirus. 
Also, you know, how to help children cope during and after a disaster. And SAMHSA has some some tips on taking care of your behavioral health, tips for distancing, quarantine, and isolation during a disease outbreak. So this was some of the research that I was just looking into for my own professional growth and helping patients, but also that I was going to talk to you guys about, but I figure it's just better if you all just read the information for yourself because there are a bunch of other different links and information that's available there depending on the specific area that you work in and the specific clientele that you serve. And this is going to be really important that you have the facts so that you can educate others because a lot of times people are going to be very scared and fearful and that's when we can help them by just providing the education, reassurance, you know, and things that they that they need to reduce their anxiety so that they're able to think more clearly, so that their stress levels are down, and with their stress levels down, their immune system is up, okay? Also, number four is we definitely need to pay extra special attention to people who um, just may need extra mental health support. So people who are naturally worriers or people with anxiety, people who need to feel in control, this is going to be extremely difficult for them. Um, People with learning disabilities or other mental health conditions, they may not be able to really understand what's going on same thing with children they may not be able to understand fully they just might hear like oh people are dying old people are at high risk of dying and that sounds really really scary so if we can just take the time to spend with them and to check in on them and see how they're doing encourage them to to become educated themselves and to prepare in to address whatever worries it is that they're most concerned about. Additionally, too, you know, the people who um, already have poor health conditions. So there's a lot of people who may have problems coping with this and just take extra notice and to reach out to them and see if they need any extra support. And lastly, number five is we need to take care of ourselves, you guys. This is extremely stressful. And it's adding another layer to the work that we already do that we're, so many of us are already stressed out about and burnt out on. This really, you know, like I said, it expands our clinical skills and it's just stretching us a little bit further. If you're already stretched to the max, then you're one of those people that I'm concerned about. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself, that you're paying attention to all of the signs of burnout, that you are paying attention to your physical health. If you have a fever, we need to be extra, extra careful about that. So just make sure that you're really honest with yourself about what's going on. How are you feeling? Are you the person that's able to best help these people? Or do we need to get you a social worker? Do you, need, do you need your therapist extra right now? And that's okay. You know, it's, it's okay. And just being honest and standing your truth with that. So I'm going to end with that. I'm going to put all of these resources in the show notes. And if you want to reach out to me, I would love to hear what your feedback is. And if you have anything that... I left out, I can always add another thing because this is going to be an ongoing issue and an ongoing topic, you know, as we go forward in the next couple months. Uh, It doesn't seem like it's going away. So we just got to deal with it. All right, you guys, stay healthy, get your vitamin C, plenty of hydration. Until next week, bye. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Social Workers Rise. 
If you loved it, write a review and give us five stars wherever you listen to your podcast. This just helps other people just like you find us and join our community. Also, I would love to connect with you on Instagram. You can find me at Social Workers Rise. I can't wait to see you next week. Bye.